Hi, I'm Dana and today I really want to talk about some of the sort of lesser known autistic traits and the terms for them because there's been a few videos now where I've brought things up where I sort of thought I was lagging behind and everyone else would know about these things and then people asked for more information I was like oh I'm not the idiot that's lagging behind like we're all just figuring this stuff out and that was quite validating but I also did a level two in understanding autism like a proper actual course because I was like if I'm talking extensively about this on the internet I probably should have some degree of knowledge beyond just my own experience so although I am speaking purely from my own experience I'm not actually educated this was like a little online like level two course free from the government like I'm not an educated person on autism this is 99.999% just my own experience and stuff that I've googled and everything else but I, I do you know, have more time to Google this stuff than a lot of people, quite frankly. So I've gotten onto it and I feel like I have some degree of knowledge around it and can relate it to my own experiences to help other autistic people better understand what's going on. So that's what this video is gonna be. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the one that most people ask about, which is social imagination. And I still find it quite hard to fully conceptualize what it is and actually put it into full words but I'm going to try my best because this was one of the things that I only learned about because I did the course and as soon as I was reading about it I was like oh my gosh this explains so much for me so I'm the type of autistic person that experiences a lot of anxiety every day all the time with everything that I do and I've had therapist after therapist be like well tell me what you're anxious about and I'd be like I, I don't know and they'd be like walk me through your morning I'd be like okay I wake up to go to college I'm really anxious. I eat my breakfast and I throw it back up because I'm really anxious. And then I leave my house and I'm super anxious. And they're like, yeah, but what do you think is gonna happen? And I truly had no idea. And that's because as an autistic person, I lack the social imagination to know what's going to happen to me at any point during my day. I can rationalize things to myself. I can be like, well, I've done X, Y, Z. I've gotten on the bus. I've gone to the supermarket. I've visited my friend's house. I've done all of these things time and time and time again. I know that I'm safe when I do them. I know that I'm able to do them. I know that things will be okay. But I also don't have the social imagination to actually conceptualize myself doing those things, to fully sort of process that that is what's about to happen to me. You know, like when I get on the bus and I scan my card and go and sit down, none of those things feel like, as much as I know they're what happened because I can rationalize it and I've done it before and I know that's what happens. I can't actually imagine myself like, like that's the thing, I can picture myself doing it. I can, you know, technically imagine myself getting on the bus, but I can't imagine it in a way that allows my brain to process that that's about to happen. And it's the same with like social interactions where I can script them, I can prepare myself for them as much as possible. I can make sure that the social situations I'm a part of are ones with people that I actually want to socialize with and enjoy being around, but I don't have the social imagination to have a settled view and like concept of myself doing it. So every time I go and do something, I struggle with actually processing and conceptualizing and, and truly envisioning myself doing it, I guess. And there's also an added layer of the fact that I can rationalize it based on things that have happened before, but I've also not had many things go wrong before in like general day-to-day -day stuff. You know, like I've had big, horrible, traumatic events, but the little things, rarely go wrong so when they do i freeze i have no idea what to do if my bus gets cancelled if my train gets cancelled if i'm already at the meeting place my friend tells me they're going to be late or they're not coming at all i have no way to cope with that change and some of it is just autistic people struggle with change but some of it is also that i don't have like the social imagination to know what to do next to know where to proceed to from that so having the mixture of like fully not being able to process and understand and conceptualize what's about to happen to me in my life. I also have the added anxiety of knowing that I just freeze if something goes wrong. If something doesn't follow what I know it to be from before, I don't have the imagination and the ability to like just change it up and do something new and react to the thing that's happening. That's the best I'm gonna be able to explain myself on that. I really hope it's done the job and I'm really sorry if it hasn't. But the next one is another one that I massively experienced, but I didn't have any word for until it just suddenly popped up online and I saw multiple TikToks talking about inter inter interrospection. 
I'm gonna put a link to it down below because I both keep saying and spelling it wrong. But what this one is, is the ability to like feel your body and actually have access to all of the senses that we have. Because obviously there's like the main ones of like taste, touch and smell and other ones that I don't remember. We all have like lots of different senses. But then for a lot of autistic people, especially me, not especially, but you know, I experienced this. Somebody's talking about my experiences. I don't know when I'm hungry. I, I, I've i gotten quite good so far this year at eating breakfast and dinner, but I don't have, I, I do, but it takes me a very, very long time to be able to pick up on and tell what is going on within my body when it's things like being hungry, being thirsty, needing the toilet. So with things like hunger and needing the toilet, I don't know that's going on until it's very, very obvious. So like, I feel like most people will be like, hmm, I'm gonna need the bathroom soon. And they'll have a fair gap between realizing it and being like, I need to go to the bathroom. Whereas for me, if I'm out and about, I just suddenly need to pee. And if I don't find a bathroom in the next five minutes, we don't wanna talk about it. It hasn't happened yet, cause I find bathrooms and I get really anxious. So I make sure, I plan a lot. I plan a lot of things. That's how I have to be because of things like this. And similarly, I quite often have the thing of being like, I should probably eat something, but it's half 11 at night. I'm gonna go to bed in a minute. I'm not gonna eat now. I'm not even hungry anyway. And then the moment I'm laying in bed, I'm like, my stomach hurts. Oh, I've got right tummy. I'm hungry. It's hunger pangs, but I can't process them and pick up on them and like know they're there until they're really there, you know? And having recently been unwell, I think it was just a bit of a flu, I don't know, I wasn't very well. And I had the very weird thing of having to really lay out my body and like go through each thing and be like, what is actually hurting? Like, what is actually bothering me? What is happening to my body? And I've had a discussion with another friend where we talked about how we both very much like, we're in here, like as much as this is my body, me and like my actual like self, me is, is in here. So my body does just sort of feel like the thing that like dangles on the end of it and does things that I need it to do because that's what bodies are for. You know, it doesn't feel like I really have, it doesn't feel like I feel it properly, you know? I quite often like will be like, oh, something hurts. And I'll have bruises and all sorts. And I, I don't know when they happened. Like, I just don't, like I do feel my body. I can feel my body. It's not an actual like, body thing you know it's the signals picking them up and being able to put it to my brain that this is what's happening and my brain's just like misshooting or not accepting i don't know it's something to do with my brain and being autistic though and not the actual body <laughs> now the next couple are a bit less serious because they're they're honestly the two big things that i've recently learned and been like oh this changes things this gives me a new understanding of myself but one that like explained a lot from childhood for me when I found out about it was echolalia. So that's sort of a stim type thing that a lot of autistic people experience where you just sort of repeat the sound that you heard and it's very much a stim, it, it tends to feel quite nice. And especially if you're like with other people that do it, you'll end up, like me and my best friend quite often end up just doing TikTok sounds back at each other. And it's fun, it's a fun little stim that you can like actually involve friends with, it's quite nice. However, like it works like that for me because I've had to like really learn to control it because I was really made to feel ashamed of it and like I wasn't normal for it and they're like as a child because there would quite often be things like I was a big reader as a kid and I would quite often read a line of text where the words were just they were just the right words in the right order and I'd have to say it back to myself a few times because it sounded so right and it was just it was so right. And people around me get really annoyed about why like, you're just repeating a line from your book, what are you doing? And similarly, I'd like take like one little tiny snippet of a song and just repeat that over and over. And it's the kind of thing that's not that big a deal and not that important, but I thought it was really fun to actually have a term for it and realize that it's something that a lot of people do and it's not just me. Now, something that can very much be its own individualized thing is face blindness, because like a lot of people experience face blindness for a lot of different reasons but autistic people can also experience it. And this was another thing that like really like made sense for me when I found out about it, because I'm the type that like, I will see people in the street that like smile and wave and they're like, oh, fancy seeing you here, how you doing? And I'll do the whole like, oh, well, I'm not bad, thanks, how are you? Oh, good, oh yeah, it was nice to see you. I have no idea who they are. Like even like days later, I'm like, I don't know who that was. And if like they came up to me at a social event and were like, oh yeah, I saw you the other day and I have like the context of who they are to put the face to and stuff, then I would know. 
But if, if they don't do that, then I will never know that we had that passing conversation. However, I'm the type of autistic person that often like doesn't go out and doesn't see people and that has been most of my life. So for me, it's mostly showing up in films with actors like Ben Affleck, Adam Sandler and who's the other guy? Ben Stiller. They're all the same man to me. I, I know that Ben Affleck is Ben Affleck if I'm watching a Kevin Smith movie. Any other time it could be any of the three. Sometimes also Tom Cruise, he blends in with them for me. Margot Robbie, Florence Pugh and Mia Goff I thought were the same person for like the longest time. Like their faces all just look the exact same to me for ages. It happens all the time with actors. And that's where it's also really weird to me because like I will have like six fucking men that all are the same man to me in Hollywood show me one guy that was in one episode of Doctor Who and I will remember him forever. I will recognise his face in anything he's in. I don't know why it works like that. <laughs> and the final thing that I want to talk about is one that you might not expect from me and that's the autistic accent because that was something that like really made sense for like childhood Dana and growing up because I was born in Stoke and then moved to Denmark when I was 11 and then moved to Rill when I was 13 and then moved to Liverpool when I was 16. So I... This is kind of embarrassing. I put on a Scouse accent for the first like two years that I lived here. I hadn't ha ever had the accent of the place that I was living in. I, I'd never had a Stoke accent because like my family weren't from there and they, they were the people I spoke to the most. I had people all the time as a kid asking where I was from, why is my accent like that? Other kids in school being like, why is your accent like that? It was a, quite a big thing for me. And it was kind of refreshing to move to Denmark and just have an English accent while speaking Danish. But then we moved back to Ville and everyone was like, what is your accent? And by that point, I was like, oh, I've moved around. I have an excuse. But I very much think that I had the autism accent, the autistic accent. And then moving to Liverpool at 16, I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not having people ask me about where I'm from and why I'm here and everything else every single time I open my mouth. Like it just got real old and real annoying and I didn't want to do it anymore. So I just put on a Scouse accent. I think people could probably tell because can I do it still? So when I first moved to Liverpool, I spoke like this. This was the way that I talked. This was what I changed myself to do. And it was just what came out when I was in college and everything. And obviously that's that's not how I speak anymore. But I think that I very much did sort of like develop myself a little like Northern accent to try and blend in a bit more. And it's one of these things where I'm not faking the way that I speak now because it is just the way that I speak. But I think that I did initially like build it for myself. You know, I don't think that this is actually anyone's accent. <laughs> And it's another one of the things that like really doesn't matter and isn't important but I think it's just interesting and this isn't another point this is just me spitballing you know riffing trying things out that's one of the worst things I've ever done I'm sorry but I've also seen people talking about autistic facial features and it's one of those things that I don't think we should be getting like super into because I don't think the studies are there and that's been a massive thing that's annoying me on TikTok lately is that people are like this study showed this and it's like that was of like four boys mate like these are not big enough test groups they are not legitimate enough studies they're not actually proving anything they're bringing up some theories that we can then go on to study more to see if there's any truth in them right now they mean nothing but I have seen a lot of discussion about the autistic facial features and it is something that I to a point think that there might be something too when a lot more study has been done and we have a more solid answer because I do feel like a lot of the time like at least for me personally with the autistic people that I've been around I've quite often had people assume that they're my like, blood family and say that we like sort of look similar even though I wouldn't have said that we do you know there is perhaps some truth to the fact that some of us sort of share facial features for some reason in some way I don't know how that would work. I'm not a medical doctor. It's just something I thought I'd throw out because I'm rounding up the video. So my next thing is that I need to ask you all to comment, please. If you want to comment on that, if you want to comment on any other part of the video, if you want to comment with anything that I haven't brought up that you could teach me, that'd be really cool and nice. Like from the moment I was diagnosed, I found it really difficult to learn about autism without just being sort of told that we're deficit in a lot of things or otherwise like just very negatively look down on in my feelings and especially when it comes to like children and stuff like I just find it quite hard to actually learn what it is to be an autistic person online in books but like and, and it's only getting worse with the way that a lot of people are talking about autism and really we don't need to get into it right at the end of the video I'm trying my best to just like be some sort of positive bit of it all so I am trying to just like 
you know be honest and be true and like actually focus on things that we know to be autistic traits and things about being autistic and not just like this one study says like i don't trust it so yeah if you wanted to comment please do <laughs> i post here on tuesdays thursdays and sundays i post near daily over on tiktok sometimes i post on instagram and i very occasionally post tv related stuff on x are we actually calling it x now i don't like it either but i think people are so yeah they're the places that you can follow me for free if you want to pay to follow me you can also go over to patreon what a great thing for you to do if you want to. there's no pressure i feel so awkward asking people for money but it is there if you want to pay me each month and if you don't want to pay me each month and you just want to give me seven million pounds all at once i've also got a kofi that you can donate to you can donate like any amount on kofi and i'm i'm not fussy like i am quite poor if you want to donate me three pounds that would be fabulous but again there's no pressure you don't have to you never have to it's always going to be fun free content over here so whoever you are wherever you are if you have a lovely morning evening day afternoon week month year and i will see you again in a couple of days